Hey EMS, good morning and welcome to chapel. My name is Mary Zook Tapiai and I'm a former student. I grew up in the neighborhood just behind Bowl of Good. I graduated in 2014 and I now live just down the street from y'all near Harmony Square in Parkview. I'm currently an AmeriCorps volunteer at Appalachian Conservation Corps. We're a nonprofit which focuses on environmental conservation, but also educating the public about the environment and our natural resources. We do a lot of trail maintenance and construction in national parks and a bunch of other public recreation areas. Part of my job is that I get to go out with our crews and camp and work in some really beautiful places like Shenandoah and the New River Gorge. Another part of my job is making sure people know that those public lands where we hike and camp and mountain bike weren't always public. Our calendar today says Columbus Day, but people were living here a long time before Columbus arrived. It's not inherently wrong that we talk about Christopher Columbus in history class as long as we're being honest and truthful about what really happened. He wasn't the first person to discover America. He wasn't even the first European to sail here to this continent. He didn't arrive on virgin land and improve the lives of savages. He invaded a thriving and established community and brought slavery and disease with him. Before I go any further, I wanna make a disclaimer. I am a white person pretty obvious. My ancestors were European colonists, like Columbus. My ancestors owned slaves and they lived on land that did not originally belong to them. I am not an anthropologist and I am not a historian. My knowledge of U.S. history and Native people is a direct result of the American education system, really similar to yours, um, and that is not always a truthful or a complete picture of how history actually played out. I thought I knew about local Native Americans because in elementary school I learned about Pocahontas, but she didn't live here. She lived over on the coast near Jamestown. All the information I know now about Native peoples in this area, in the Shenandoah Valley, I had to go out and intentionally look for it. It did not come to me naturally. This is an ongoing process, the learning process. Researching indigenous groups isn't always easy because many of their languages and histories have been lost primarily due to that forced assimilation process by European colonists. Native people weren't allowed to speak their native languages in public and so over generations a lot of those names and histories were lost so that makes it hard to just google things. Also, because many of their groups started out as nomadic, it's not always possible to pin down there were X amount of people in this location during this year. However, we're lucky in Virginia that there are several foundations and organizations dedicated to recognizing and preserving indigenous history. So that's where a lot of my information came from. Two prominent groups lived in this area that we now know as Harrisonburg, the Monacan Nation and the Manahoac. The Monacan Nation lived from here and a little south towards Stanton, and the Mon Manahoac lived from here and up north into the highlands, which we now call Shenandoah National Park. Um, while some white and Anglo-Americans, like me, can trace their family history back about 13 generations, many Native people from this area have been living here for over 300 generations. So you can do the math, a generation is about 25 years. It's likely, though, that up to 90% of those people in these groups were killed by smallpox from Spanish and English settlers in the 1600s, and all of their land was forcibly taken from them. Um, that land is now our neighborhoods and our school campus. Later in the 1800s and 1900s, American Indians were considered color people and were forced to abide by segregation laws. They weren't allowed to attend white schools or churches. They couldn't own land or marry white people. That's part of the reason why now we use the term BIPOC today, which stands for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color. We can't change history. We can't change what happened, but one of the ways we can do better now is by practicing a land acknowledgement which is really just a statement that recognizes the indigenous groups or tribes that lived on the land before white people arrived, white colonizers arrived. It's a way to respect the community that existed before this current one. And it's a reminder that of the genocide and the violence that occurred, very honestly. It's becoming more common in areas that still have very active indigenous groups um, to make a land acknowledgement before any public event 
in Canada, Australia, or New Zealand, um, and even in some states here in the U.S., you might hear a land acknowledgement before a city council meeting, a parade, or even a sports event. At Appalachian Conservation Corps, we make a land acknowledgement anytime we start a new project in a new area. It's on our website, and our land acknowledgement sounds like this. Before we begin working on this land today, we want to acknowledge that they're a traditional territory of the Monacan Nation. As we work to preserve and protect our lands, we believe it is crucial to be mindful that our now public lands were once home to thousands of indigenous communities who were eradicated from their homes. If we do not recognize this piece of history, then we feel we will never be able to truly foster an inclusive environment for all to feel welcomed and valued and to have a positive experience working directly on our lands. I can't cover everything I've learned in this chapel period, and you really shouldn't take my word for it anyway. I hope you can do some research of your own in your classes. If you're interested, there's a lot of information out there if you look. Again, it's hard to just make a cold Google search of indigenous people from your area, but I've sent a handout to your teachers with additional resources, and the best place to start is the native land map, where you can plug in a zip code and it will show you roughly the area where did various indigenous groups once lived. This will give you a better idea of what to Google and where to look for more info. You can also email leaders of indigenous tribes. They're still around today. The Monacan Nation is still pretty active today in this area. You can send emails to their tribal leaders and you can learn more about them at the Natural Bridge um, Museum. I'm not here to make you feel guilty <laughs> about being white or for being descended from colonists who stole land. That's not the point today. The past is not your fault, and you can't control where you grew up or who raised you. You cannot change what's already happened, but it is your responsibility to learn the truth and to adjust your behavior accordingly. When you know better, you do better, and that creates a cycle of growth which will improve your relationships and your community. It's also important that we, as Christians and followers of Jesus, acknowledge other cultural groups and races because we believe that all humans were created in the image of God. I think it would be so amazing if EMS incorporated land acknowledgments into your school culture. It doesn't have to happen every day or at the beginning of every class period, but imagine how much you could inform the surrounding community if a visitor attended an EMS soccer game and they heard a land acknowledgement right there on the field with the mountains in the background. If you're interested in land justice or environmental conservation work, you might be interested in working with Appalachian Conservation Corps. It's especially a great option if you're looking for a gap year between high school and college. I did something similar. I worked in a lot of camps and a lot of outdoor education programs before I went to college and I got my abbreviated associate's degree in adventure sports management. Uh, Appalachian Conservation Corps is associated with AmeriCorps, so our volunteers get really awesome benefits like health insurance and a living stipend and also help paying for school and job training. Um, my contact information will be on the discussion sheet that you'll get in neighbor, neighbor group tomorrow, so you can absolutely shoot me an email anytime with questions about job opportunities, volunteer opportunities, maybe even an E-term possibility, um, or if you just have questions about indigenous land or land acknowledgements, you can holler. Thanks so much for being here today, and I'll see you guys out on the trail.